Hi, I'm Kevin Kelly, and um, today I want to talk about the next challenges for China in the internet space. There are three upcoming challenges for China in the internet space. They are um, what comes after the smartphone, um, the role of privacy, and globalization. So I want to talk about those three challenges ahead one by one. So um, the first uh, challenge for China is what comes after the smartphone. That is um, something else in everybody's mind because China has invested huge amounts of money into the mobile world. Most of the people accessing the internet are doing it through their smartphones. Um, China is actually one of the largest manufacturers of smartphones for the entire world. Um, and the largest companies in China, in the internet realm, are all wholly dependent on people's use of the smartphone. So what comes after that is very important and actually not very clear. My guess about what comes next is that we move to wearable glasses um, that give an AR version of the world. But um, there are alternatives to that. It may be that um, what comes after the smartphone is something that's still a device that we hold in our hands. Maybe something that can do three-dimensional vision on a, like an iPad or a, a platform or a plank something that's maybe foldable that you can unfold. So there are great uh, new innovations in foldable screens where you can unfold and see a larger um, vision, a larger view, and maybe those views can even become something that we see holographically in three dimensions. Um, or maybe they could even unfold even larger into something that could surround us and we have more of an immersive experience. So it's possible that what comes after smartphones and the next evolution of the internet is, is basically unfoldable screens. Screens that continue to populate us, but the ones we can actually compress and carry into our pocket. It's also possible that after the smartphone that um, we have um, something that's uh, really not um, so much a, a phone, but or not even something that we um, wear, but things like the, the other kinds of wearables like the, um, the watch, and that there could be something that could project from, from a watch or that would um, uh, allow us to um, see the world, and not something that we wear on our glasses, but something that's projected into our eyes. That's a lot further away. There are a lot of attempts to try and make something that's going directly into our brain. Um, the Elon, Elon Musk's um, Neuralace. There's lots of attempts to try and do a computer brain um, interface. And I think that's possible, but many, many years off. So I don't think that's the next thing after the smartphones. I, I, I'm betting on the fact that we will have see-through glasses that we will be able to um, see the real world and have layers of information or virtual reality imposed upon, inserted into these worlds, and that we will be able to um, have the internet through those glasses. Not just that we can see spatial geographical models of the world, but that we could also see layers of uh, information and artificial synthetic screens, virtual screens everywhere. And um, that for most people, we will be able to continue this kind of um, viewing of information through these glasses. Um, and I think that's possible within three to five years, the, the, the first versions of it. Um, and if that was to happen, I think we would see a migration away from the things that we carry into these glasses. And at the very beginning, they're probably going to be linked together. 
we're probably going to be tethered. The glasses will probably require that we have a, something in our pocket, but that over time that the screen on the device will become less important. They'll probably still be there, but that it won't become the major portal. So that in a certain sense, the smartphone continues, but it becomes more of a facilitator for the glasses. And so that the center of the attention moves away from the device, even though we still carry the device with us. But that that device is not just with it, uh, serving its own screen, but also in many ways serving the screen that comes through our glasses. So I think this understanding or deciding or um, being able to um, uh, converge on the next technology after the smartphone is one of the greatest challenges that the manufacturers and the um, lords of the current internet have to come to grips with is which way is it going to go and how fast is it going to happen. Um, it's uncertain, but I am betting that's going to happen through these classes. The second challenge for the Chinese internet is um, uh, privacy, privacy issues. Is this issue that uh, is affecting all the internet companies around the world, which is um, the degree of information that they're collecting, the status of that, um, the ability to use that information to affect behavior of people who um, are giving that information, who are using these devices and these services, and coming to some kind of a reckoning of what we as society have and what responsibilities and duties these internet companies have to the people who are using them. What's the relationship besides the fact that they're customers and we're selling them their attention? What else is going to come out of the fact that our own behaviors are so captured so digitized that we can, people can use them for all kinds of things. And, and this issue is starting to bubble up in America and Europe, but it's also going to be bubbling up in China. And so um, I think this is going to be a challenge in the next five years for Chinese internet companies as the amount of information um, continues to accumulate and becomes um, more and more of a concern for anybody in, who is participating. And um, the answers are unclear. It's not as if we know what to do. We don't know. There's, there's a conversation happening in a collective way of us trying to decide um, what we're going to do with this information how much more of it we want to integrate and allow AIs to look at, and how powerful um, we will allow the response to that information be. Because we can see already that enough of our own lives are revealed that we can use it to influence our behavior. And of course, that's what advertising is. Advertising is meant to influence our behavior. That's what an ad is trying to do. It's trying to change your behavior so you buy something. So we know that, that that's possible. If you take all the information and it's very targeted to you, you can, you can affect the behavior of a, a person. And so if we have this at large scale, the question is, well, what's the agreement? What's, what are we allowing? What are we not allowing? What do we want to kind of promote? Uh, in the issue of um, news and forwarding of rumors, um, what should be allowed to be said, what should not be allowed to be said, these are also similar challenges, both in the West and in China. And um, even though we're seeing it first in the West, I think it's coming to China as well, and it will be something that will be um, a big issue that will have to be decided collectively in a conversation somehow or other. Um, how that works in China, I'm not sure, but I think that is a major 
challenge ahead. And um, it, it will be something that um, affects many different dimensions. It's not just privacy, it's also the issue of community standards, of, of, of an agreement about what we want these tools to do. Um, uh, there's the issue of, of information and rumors and um, whether you can trust something, whether something's true or not. How do we decide what's true? How do we um, allow people to say things so that we can get information shared and yet control the unintended consequences or the negative consequences of sharing things that aren't true. And these are very complicated issues. Again, we don't know what the solutions are. We haven't even decided what the problems are in, in particular. And so it's going to take some time. And I think um, Chinese internet companies could get ahead of the curve of ahead of this problem by starting to engage ethicists, community people, the government, officials, technologists in, in, in the conversations about this. And, and I think um, uh, just letting the, uh, the Europeans and the Americans kind of solve this and then importing it to China is not really going to work. I think the China needs to come up with its own solution and it'll be better to start now rather than to wait in trying to come up with that solution. The third challenge for internet companies in China is globalization. Globalization is an issue because so far, most of the huge success the Chinese internet companies have had has been within China itself. All the major internet companies like Tencent, Baidu, Alibaba have not really had great success outside of China. Even some of the larger smartphone manufacturers and device makers have had most of their success in China as well. So in order for China to con the Chinese internet to continue to grow uh, and the companies behind it, they need to kind of like go beyond China. And that's a huge, huge um, challenge. And part of the reason why it's a challenge is because in a certain way, China has protected its own internet um, industry from globalization by making it more difficult for other companies to come in. Some of that's a natural difficulty in the language uh, translation barrier, and some of it's an artificial difficulty imposed by the government. And so that protection has been really good for China in developing its own native um, internet company. But I think at a certain point, it becomes detrimental and a challenge to further growth. So in order for China to really take the next step in the world of the internet and joining the global internet, it has to go beyond its borders. And it has to make it easier for others to come in and play in China because in a certain sense, this protection has also defended against the real competitive pressures of having to compete against other companies that are more global. So it's sort of like maturing and growing up. If it wants to play in a big league, it's going to have to allow others to play on its field as well as this playing on a bigger field. And so, um, so there is a, so there's a several multi-step process to becoming a global internet world, letting others play and also playing outside of the boundaries. I have, there's no question that most of the major internet companies in China would like to play in a global field um, and they just have to learn how to do that and it's a much more difficult process. But that is sort of the next step, the next challenge for the internet companies because you can only have so much growth as big as China is, it's still limited. And if you saturate China, then you need to go beyond into the other parts of the world where there is not as much internet and the presence is still um, uh, behind. And so um, that is a huge challenge and opportunity for the Chinese internet companies. 
Um, I think that the next level of 5G, of fiber optic, of the cloud, is going to be a totally global infrastructure. And it will require a global approach to making this work. And so I think the largest companies that will prevail on this next version of the internet, 5G, fiber optic cloud, are going to be globally oriented companies. And so um, China's internet companies have to shift to becoming truly global participants and global brands and globally minded in order to prevail on this next level of the internet. So those are the three challenges ahead. Privacy, what comes after smartphones, and globalization. So it's a lot of work, um, and I'm looking forward to see what happens. Thanks for your attention.